What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got a new cool tech episode where we're taking a look at a whole variety of products, as you guys have seen in previous versions of this series. And as always, if you'd like to win something, just make sure you go ahead and drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and also leave a comment down below with what your favorite item is. And I'll be picking a winner in the comment section and messaging you on Instagram in a few weeks. So in today's video, I feel like it's kind of the summer theme. You have a lot of products that can appeal to people who travel, are looking to improve their desk setups, or also just planning to go outside because we have this projector from Nomadic which is in a nice four screen color. It is very portable and easy to use as well as Sony's brand new headphones which are the new XM5s and if you're doing a ton of traveling these are must haves. And there's also the Logitech MX mechanical keyboard that I checked out recently and that is something that can really make a difference to your daily productivity workflow. So without further ado let's go ahead and get started and as always all the products are going to be linked down below. So with a ton of travel coming up, this product couldn't have come out at a better time, and that is the brand new Sony WH-1000 XM5s. The name is something that they still haven't updated, but this headphone is a refresh to Sony's flagship active noise cancellation headphones, and it's essentially their best combination of active noise cancellation as well as sound quality. The first thing that you're gonna notice is that the design is slightly refined. You can see it just has like a very simple and minimal look, and that is an approach that Bose has also gone with as well. I think Sony's design has always been quite good. I liked it in both like the white and the black version, but I feel like the white version is able to hide fingerprints a lot better. It still has a very durable fit to it, um, but it does have quite a bit of plastic considering it comes in at the price of about $400. The multi-noise sensor technology features eight microphones and it's able to capture that ambient sound and accurately reduce the high frequency noise thanks to the Auto NC optimizer. Something that Sony has focused a lot on is in their processing. And this has the HD noise cancelling processor QN1, as well as the integrated processor V1. In terms of noise cancellation, I've had some great experiences on the market, but this is probably the best available at the moment. And when it comes to the actual sound quality, it features a new 30 millimeter driver, which has a nice like tight sound to it, but at the same time is very well balanced and still delivers quite a bit of bass. The form factor itself definitely reflects quite a bit of power when it comes to its setup. And the total battery life that it is able to deliver is about 30 hours. So when you're looking for a headphone that is able to block out all the ambient noise on a plane, for example, then this is an option that could be a go-to product if you travel a ton. But this option right here is probably the best noise cancellation with very good sound quality, whereas the Bose 700 is maybe a little bit more portable and still has pretty good sound quality. And even though I really like the sound that the AirPod Max is able to produce, it is just way too big and I don't really find the comfort to be that good. So I think this is a very compelling option right here. So the next set of products are ones that you can definitely add to your desk setup and it is from Logitech. They actually had a few releases in the past month, some of which were more minor updates, whereas others are a bit of a different form factor and maybe something that you're not quite used to from Logitech. But the first one is the MX Mechanical Keyboard. If you guys wanna go ahead and check out the full review and detailed comparison on my channel, I'll have a link to that down below. But this is a mechanical version of the Logitech MX Keys, which is more of a productivity key keyboard, which you normally wouldn't attribute with a mechanical option, but I do feel like in the past couple of years, mechanical keyboards have become increasingly popular in use of productivity or just day-to-day -day typing, as opposed to what was normally more so for gaming before. There's been a lot of good options on the market. There's like Keychron, for example, and like the Habit, which is a very nice budget price. And the Logitech keyboards tend to come in at a price point between $100 and $150. And this is the mechanical keyboard that is available in both the mini version right here, as well as in a version that has the number pad. What's cool about it is that it is a mechanical keyboard that has three different switch options. So this is the brown switch, the more like soft and tactile one that still has a bit of audible feedback. There's also one that is in the middle and there's another that is a lot more clicky. And you can kind of pick between the brown, the red and the blue choice. And personally, I think the blue one is the one that is best suited for me, but I've also really liked the brown one right here. One of the biggest observations that I have is that when it comes to key travel, it is right in the middle. It doesn't have like too much travel like a full-size gaming keyboard, but at the same time, 
time it isn't a laptop keyboard. And I think it's a perfect amount if you do a ton of typing on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is why I think this is gonna be very popular. They also launched the MX3S mouse, which is a lot quieter and it has a higher DPI rating, but that is more of a minor incremental update. But another product that has increasing popularity lately is the vertical ergonomics. This is a Logitech Lift, and it comes in at a price point that is quite a bit under $100, which I think is very reasonable, and it is available in quite a few fun colors as well. I personally have to use the MX Master Mouse because of the horizontal scrolling for video editing, but this vertical form factor is good for ergonomics when it comes to just giving your wrist a bit of a break. A lot of times having your hand in this position for many hours a day is a bit awkward. And so if you wanna get past that, then I think this Logitech Lift is the perfect solution. It does have like a nice scroll wheel. There's also a bit of a control right here and buttons on the side. But as I mentioned, if you need the horizontal scrolling, then the MX Master is your only option. From a design standpoint, it looks great. It has a soft touch finish for the palm and it has the same ridges that you find on their flagship mouse. So yeah, if you guys wanna check this out, these are some of the new products from Logitech that came out recently. So one of my favorite items to check out on the channel is projectors and we have covered a ton of them. There's ones that have like very large image throws as well as like laser TVs that are more short throw. But at the same time, I feel like this is a category that has seen a ton of improvement, especially in the past couple years. This right here is a Nomadic X300 and I wanna give a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video. And if you wanna go ahead and check it out for yourself, I'm gonna drop a link down below. But there's a few elements of it that I really enjoy, including the design, the sound quality, the overall form factor, is as well as just the ease of portability to be able to bring this with you everywhere. Whether you're going camping, staying at a cabin for a week, you can literally just put this in the car, take it with you and enjoy movies at a large scale, like a hundred inches. So from a design standpoint, this has got to be one of the best looking projectors that I've checked out to date. It has like this nice finish that goes all the way around in this forest olive green color, which is very popular. You've seen Apple do it recently, as well as like a gold trim that goes throughout with the metal finish and a grill on the front. The general form factor is laid out in the fact that you have a mirror on the top that is able to reflect that image up to 100 inches at a full HD resolution. But beyond that, you have all of your controls along the top here and just some of the specifics of connecting the audio as well because you can use this as a speaker. What is nice though is if you want to take this anywhere with you, there is like a leather strap that you can just like carry it around like a lunchbox or a Bluetooth speaker. And there's also a partnership with Harman Kardon here where they've built like a custom speaker setup that is not only able to give you great music listening experience, but also enjoying it through movies and TV shows that you want to watch with a projector. Going into the specs of the display, it's able to give you a 1080p full HD resolution with a superb color range and a 3 million to 1 contrast ratio. It totals with just about a billion colors and it has a 125% Rec. 709 coverage, which for like a projector of this size, it may not have features like HDR or a P3 color gamut, but I feel like the form factor is where this really shines and in dark scenarios, it is able to perform quite nicely. You just play a movie on it and you can see that in a 100 inch form factor, it is able to to give you like a pretty good level of contrast, which I think is one of the most important things when it comes to portable projectors, but the sharpness was decent and the color accuracy was relatively good. It is also a completely wireless setup because you can just stream via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. On top of that, it also has a built-in 10,000 milliamp hour battery, which gives you three hours of projection when you're watching movies and six hours of music listening, which I would say is pretty respectable, but whenever you can, you do want to just keep it plugged in. But another thing that I also notice is just how quiet the projector is. When it comes to some of the details of the audio technology and partnership with Harman Kardon, it features dual sets of tweeters and woofers as well as passive radiators and it's powered by a 30 watt Class D amplifier. Harman Kardon is obviously a very well known brand and with that audio optimization, I found that due to its size and everything, it was able to deliver as like a Bluetooth speaker, giving you a good level of bass, relatively clear trebles. And when it comes to the home theater experience and the fans that are inside, a good speaker is an added bonus whenever you have a portable setup like this, where you just want to bring this and nothing else. It's almost like they prioritize the audio side just as much as they did the video. 
When it comes to like the IO side of things, you do have your power control, the micro SD card slot, an auxiliary cord, as well as an auxiliary out, a USB for charging your smartphone or something. There's also an IR blaster, um, HDMI, USB type C, and also the DC. So there's just a ton of flexibility there. You can connect your own devices, such as a game console and have that on the go. But I just like the fact that it's all laid out very nicely. There's like an open front and back for great 360 degree dimensional speaker sound, and also a lot of room for it to ventilate, which is why it is able to perform very quietly. But on top of that, it also has all these knurled controls and buttons on the top that are easy to access. And when you're just ready to go and pack it up, you can just flip the actual mirror down carry it by its handle and take this with you everywhere. And as long as you have the battery charge, you can technically just boot this up and start using it wherever you are. I also just really like how durable it is because I picture this being in an environment where you're like camping, going on a road trip, and you might throw this in the car with all the other stuff that you might have. So having a setup that is durable and doesn't have to be protected separately is always nice. So when it comes to design, this is definitely one of the most interesting products that I've checked out recently, both in terms of design and functionality. And I think it is just like a fun product overall that still gives you pretty good levels of performance. So if you guys want So if you guys remember on the channel a few months ago, I checked out something called the Whoop Band. And that is a health product that has become quite popular and it's able to give you great information when it comes to your sleep, your HRV, your general activity, and just insightful health data that I feel like a lot of people are looking to find out more of, especially in the past couple of years. And there's been a ton of options on the market. Some of them are more ergonomic, others are more stylish, and others are more accurate. And it just really comes down to finding that balance. and even though the wet band provided very good information and has been scientifically tested to have quite a high accuracy, one issue that I kind of had with it is that I didn't really like to wear it on the wrist because I typically wear a watch on my right hand because I'm left-handed. And instead I decided to wear it on my arm and I just found it to be a bit obstructive, especially while I was sleeping. So one product that also came out um, recently is the Aura Ring Generation 3. And this is something that I've seen everywhere. Uh, a lot of my friends in business and in tech seem to wear one and when I went to the Apple event recently I noticed pretty much like a huge majority of people have one as well and the reason why is because it is a ring it is able to fit on just so seamlessly it comes in a lot of nice colors including a gloss black a gold silver and also this like matte black option right here and there's also been a Gucci collab which even though I'm someone who like wears a Gucci ring and kind of likes that stuff I feel it's a bit like out there or weird looking and I personally think it goes very well with just whatever I'm wearing in like a matte black finish. What I like most about this is that it is super light. You can just put it on, it actually has a sizing kit that they send to you and then you can really figure out what your size is, but it is super, super light. And on top of that, it is able to give you insightful information when it comes to sleep, your HRV, and general activity, as well as your recovery score. And as someone who travels a ton, I feel like that is a very important set of data to have. I think there's three key features that I really like about the Aura Ring, one of which being the fact that it knows when you are like exercising, for example, with automatic activity monitoring, because a lot of times I just forget to go into the app and turn it on into like an exercise mode. But at the same time, I also like the sleep tracking and how it's so seamless. And also the fact that the battery life is able to last four to seven days and it's able to recharge in between 20 and 80 minutes. So you don't really have to take it off for that long to ensure that it is charged for the week and that is why I like it but I do know based on some of like the scientific tests the accuracy itself can be a bit back and forth. So as I mentioned, one of the reasons why I decided to make a cool tech series is because it allows us to check things out in all different categories. Instead of being limited by price range or like product realm, we're able to essentially check out stuff in like home tech, sports, and also in automotive, which I feel like is kind of like the pinnacle of technology right now. It really does bring together the world of like artificial intelligence, connected future, but also battery technology and infrastructures around the world. And obviously Tesla 
Tesla has kind of been the leader of that, but all of these major car manufacturers that have traditionally been known for like their gas engine cars, such as Mercedes, Porsche, and Audi, have kind of put together their experience in design and luxury with a fully electric car. So whenever we do have the opportunity to check out these cars, I always try to take it. And our team was in San Francisco recently to have the opportunity to drive the new Mercedes EQS 580. And that really goes in line with like the Mercedes S580 review that we recently did because that was easily the most comfortable car that I've been in, um, whether it was like the driving experience, sitting in the back, and the EQS 580 was kind of like the futuristic model of that, that has like the rounded off look, the screen that goes all the way across, the self-driving capabilities, and in general, literally looked like something out of a movie. The EQS 580 starts at a price of $140,000, and it has an equivalent of 516 horsepower and 631 pound-feet of torque. On technical terms, the screen is 56 inches and it's a curved screen that has up to three displays on that dashboard. When it comes to speed, it has zero to 60 of 4.1 seconds and a top speed of 130 miles per hour. As for range, it can do about 340 miles, which I would overall say is pretty respectable. And as I mentioned, this is just like the start of it. There's gonna be many other electric cars that we're gonna have the opportunity to check out and each of them have like very different approaches. The luxury ones have obviously be something that I'm interested in because I love German cars. The Taycan was a really fun experience, but at the same time, from a consumer's perspective, there's also some very exciting offerings that are coming to the market, including from companies like VinFast, which bring like a 10 year warranty to the car, which for any like current car on the market today is essentially unheard of. And with technologies of the future, I think we're gonna to start to see that a lot more often. The fact that electric cars and their batteries can be updated, improved, and also enhanced via software is also like a very interesting idea to me. So perhaps one of the most exciting products that has showed up at the office recently is Apple's new setup of products. I know the studio display is a little bit controversial and for some people it's going to be a pretty good value, whereas for others it's going to be way out of your price range and you just shouldn't look at it. On the other hand, we have the Mac Studio, and this is something that gets me really excited. I'm still kind of on the fence of whether or not I'm going to switch over to it completely because I currently use the Mac Pro, and there's a lot of different like parts inside that I'm trying to figure out if it can work with this workflow, but it definitely makes me excited for Apple's continued future of their own silicon and just how powerful it actually is. I could talk about this in a whole video of its own, but just look at the computer itself, it has the option of the M1 Max, which is already very powerful, as well as the M1 Ultra, which is essentially two M1 Maxes put together, and it gives you up to 128 gigs of unified memory. On top of that, it has up to 64 cores of GPU and 20 cores of CPU. And for any video editor out there or anyone who uses a lot of graphics and computing performance in general, it is an absolute dream. And after using it for a little bit, I can tell you that the performance definitely lives up, but a lot of people are not going to need to spend that high price point of the M1 Ultra because the M1 Max is already more than capable. Some of the other features though, include the fact that the back has four Thunderbolt ports. And even though it does look like a Mac mini or nothing like special, the four Thunderbolt ports all have their own bus, which is something that I can definitely benefit from by having so many like hard drives, SSDs and RAID drives connected to a computer at the same time. I noticed a lot of times on my Mac Pro, I have an issue with like drive speeds if there's a ton of things connected. So by having a separate bus for each one and the Thunderbolt speeds, that is definitely huge. And on top of that, everything else is very typical. There's like the HDMI, you also have your USB ports, and this can support up to five displays, I believe, with three or four of them being the XDR, and you can also have like an OLED TV. But most of the time, I would say like two to three displays seems like the typical setup. But all in all, the Mac Studio has been really nice to use, and at just the fraction of the size of Apple's Pro Desktop, it is able to beat it in terms of power. Simply for what I do, I've noticed that the optimization in both the software and the chipset has really brought some real world differences. When it comes to headphones, one thing that I'm always excited to check out is products that are available in different configuration and form factors to suit specific needs. You have the traditional offerings such as in-ear as well as truly wireless, the over-ear and on-ear, and there's also options such as the frames which are able to give you a sunglasses or glasses experience. This right here is the Open Run Pro from Shox. And what I like about it is that if you don't like to have something in your ear while you're 
you're running around or walking around town and don't want to be completely disconnected from your surroundings, but also from a comfort standpoint, want more of like a off ear experience, then these bone conduction sport headphones are a great option for you. It is essentially a one size fits all. You don't have to do any specific adjustments for the fit. You just put it around your ear like so, and it lines up perfectly and it just feels very light. You almost forget that they're on your ear as it wraps around, it doesn't make too much contact. And at the same time, there are no pressure points. So if you decide to go for a run and still want to enjoy what's around you, but at the same time have great audio quality and be able to listen to your music and do some calls, then this is a great solution. So for someone who is very active and prioritizes comfort and fit over having that noise canceling experience and that full seal that isolates you from your surroundings, then this is the perfect choice. So this next product is one that actually arrived in the office a long time ago, but we're finally getting around to setting it up and putting it together for one of our editors to use, and that is the EVE Spectrum 4K monitor. And what's special about this is that EVE is a company that has kind of pushed the boundaries of a product that really focuses specifically on what the consumer wants at prices that are a lot more reasonable than some of the other big name products on the market that have the exact same specs. And with the EVE Spectrum monitor is a 27 inch monitor that comes in three different options and it starts in the under $500 range and goes up to $799 for the flagship model that we have right here and you either have the choice between a QHD resolution at 144 hertz max refresh rate as well as a QHD 240 hertz or a 4k 240 hertz which is what we have right here and on top of that it is also a display that is IPS has a max brightness of 750 nits as well as a one millisecond response time that 240 hertz that we mentioned and also NVIDIA G-Sync support. It also does have a P3 color gamut. So as someone who does like a lot of video editing and photo editing, that is always very useful. And the max brightness is definitely appreciated as well. And at a price of $7.99, especially if you have to like outfit an office in these, it is way more affordable and a much better value than something like obviously a Pro Display XDR. And on top of that, it does also have HDR support if that is something that you're going to take advantage of in gaming and also in editing. So something else that we also picked up recently is a DJI Mavic 3 drone. I believe it was first announced about six months ago. And to be honest, I've been away from drones for quite a few years now. I simply haven't had the need for them, but now with a team that is capable of flying drones and with the travel films coming back, I figured it'd be a good time to pick one up and go ahead and integrate it into some of our content just to add another dimension. So with the new Mavic 3, it has quite a few features that I specifically care about when it comes to image quality. For starters, the sensor is a lot larger. It's a 4 thirds Hasselblad CMOS sensor and it's able to capture in a much better image quality, but at the same time you have manual aperture control. You can also record in 5.1K, you have options for ProRes, the 12.8 stops of dynamic range, and you can also record in D-Log 10-bit. As someone who started grading a lot of footage in the past couple years, it's really nice to be able to have as much data as possible. And by being able to record at up to 200 megabits per second in its bit rate, I at least have a good amount of latitude that when the drone footage comes back, we're able to grade it accordingly and balancing it out and also integrate it into the videos with all the other cameras that are on the ground very smoothly. I think that's always been kind of my main priority with drones, um, the ease of flight, but also the image quality elements. And I always felt like there was like a compromise between one another back when I was really into drones in like 2015. On the other hand though, this is still like a very compact size. It comes in at under 900 grams in its overall weight and the battery life is also improved to over 45 minutes, which is a huge jump from like the 20 minutes that I used to get on my older models. I also really like the slight update to the remote. I just feel like it's a lot easier to grip. And at the same time, you still have your phone stand here that is just a lot more solid than before. None of that folding stuff. It comes with a nice carrying case and overall, and we're definitely excited to use this a lot more as we integrate it into our general lifestyle and tech content. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, as always, make sure you go ahead and drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what your favorite item is because there's definitely a huge variety in this episode. And I'll see you all in the next one.